the job of an abuser, and I mean a narcissistic, sadistic, vampiric, egotistical abuser, is to show up every single day. They're never a no-show in terms of being where you are, the victim, if you will. They're their prey to make sure that they inflict their abuse upon you in as many different ways as they possibly can every single day. That's their full-time job. Quite actually. That's what they exist for. They're waiting specifically for their target just to come around and abuse you. And they're so manipulative. They have all the tactics in the book. So many of these are most likely becoming quite obvious to a lot of you real hearts out there, the tactics that are being utilized by these vampiric abusers. They keep saying, oh, I have, I have no interest in anything that you have to say, but I'm going to keep showing up every day and just continue to abuse you and insult you and cut you down, just try to tear you down in every single way possible. But, oh, you're just, you're lost. I don't, I don't like what you have to say anymore. And yet there they are again the next day because you're the target. Oh, I just, my job is just to keep tearing you down. Don't you get it? Oh, I get it. (laughs) That's, that's the only funny part about it is that I get the joke that the, the abuser is. And you are, all you abusers, you're just a, a bunch of jokes. You're just a bunch of clown retards. That's all you are. You keep saying, oh, I have no interest, you're lost, you know, etc., etc. All the same rhetoric, BS. And just like the schoolyard bully, there you are, just ready to punch the lights out of your victim that you have your sights set on. And you'll be relentless. And you'll try all the different tactics, all the subtle ones, and so on. And then the other ones, it's, you work as a group as well. Some will be a little bit more positive, some a little more negative. You gang up. You're a gang. Quite actually, a gang of vampire abusers. So you're coming at your target from every single possible angle. And I'm not going to relent in talking about this just because some of the abusers think that It's too negative or, oh, the message is so dark. Yeah, you're damn right it's dark. This is a dark hell place. The end and the abusers or just the ones stuck in the cave. Just say the opposite. Because if it's the abuser, that's their job. And if one's just stuck in the cave of ignorance, then... That's just another problem altogether. You're just remaining caught in the program and not seeing how dark it is here. Not seeing how grotesque and ugly this place has become because of all the wrong ideas compiled in its cancer system. And that's not on me if someone wants to remain in the cave And that's another way I wanted to present it today. Instead of saying it's the cave, which it is, you know, like Plato's allegory, the cave, those who get stuck in it because they've been manipulated to believe that this place is just hunky-dory, just fine how it is. You just have your little experience, just remain positive. Everything will turn out for the best. Wait for death. Death is where the real war happens. (laughs) All these things, death trying to convince you that death is a is a good thing. You just need to wait for it. That's where everything is really going to take place. Just all deceptions, deceptions and lies, you know, stacked on top of each other. 
it just wants you to remain in its cave system. Another way that I looked at it metaphorically for myself years ago was to call it camp instead. So as one moves away from camp, if you will, and goes on their journey and then sees just things that no one was talking about before and then goes back to camp and starts saying, hey, did you ever hear about this or notice this? And then all the people in camp are looking at you going, what the hell are you talking about? All there is is camp. There's nothing out there. Where did you even go? What are you, what are you going on about? Did you do drugs? And so on, right? So, the, the seeker of truth just ignores that. And they journey out a little further. And they keep coming back to camp. But the next time they come back, they've seen even more. And then it sounds even crazier to the, those in camp. And of course, one can use the cave analogy as the same thing. You can go back to the cave instead. You go back to the cave and look at all those who are just chasing their shadows. And the shadows are just things like chasing money, chasing a career, chasing sex, chasing all these things. These are the addictions that just take over the individual. And when enough of them take over the individual, they are just drunk in the excess of of it all. Drunk on the highs that all of these chases deliver. Drunk on the high with the chase after money. Drunk on the high, the chase after a career, chase after relationships, chase after, yeah, even alcohol and drugs, chase after entertainment, chase after your next vacation, the next purchase that you're going to make. And one after all those chases is so drunk, so consumed by the excesses that they are anything but sober, anything whatsoever. And this is really the most important point to take into consideration is one, as an individual, that they are sober right now. And when people hear that, this aspect of sobriety, it's always thought that it's being referred to alcohol especially, or drug use. But there are all types of things that are keeping one from being sober, and that are clouding one's vision. All kinds. The chases are many. And the excesses are many. That's that's just obvious. So at this moment, asking oneself, am I caught in all these chases? And have, have I been listening to all the vampire abusers being manipulated by all of their different tactics? And they work as a team. They use, yeah, the positive or good side as well as the negative side in their manipulation. For sure they do. You notice, even many of these individuals, you know, that poured their praise upon me in regards to this channel, and now they're doing exactly the opposite. It's just, yeah, as soon as you have nothing to offer in the ways that they wanted you to give to them like everything of your existence and energy your life force oh you have nothing left that I'm looking for you're just worthless to me and they just spit on you get the hell out of here you're a bum you just have nothing left you're not the same these are just vampire abusers that's all they are Yeah, as soon as you don't have this excessiveness to just hand over to them, they're just done with you immediately. 
they reveal themselves. All of you that are like that, you reveal yourself. That's all that you're doing. And you think I'm going to bow down, I'm going to kowtow to you? You think that heaven's going to open up its gates for you? Really, that's so hubristic. You don't conceptualize what vision is all about and the importance of it. The absolute importance of correcting the vision. The vampire system players are all in on it. They know what's going on and they know exactly who they serve. They serve evil, they serve Satan, Lucifer, whatever, the one who goes by a thousand or a million different names. The system players are always ready to be in service to the system of evil. And they ask, Master, who is my next target? And so the next target is given that individual, that heart right there. All of you, my minions, go gang up on that individual and tear them to shreds. And so that's what's done. And as I said, they use every play in their book to do that. Their true happiness and joy is in seeing others suffer. In seeing the heart suffer. They get their kicks on that. That's where they are happy. And the more that you suffer, the happier they are. That's the truth. Yeah, it sounds sadistic, but it's a fact. Really pay attention. This is not a time to be drunk on excess. It is time to sober up. Completely. I mean that, completely sober up. Is one beginning to see it at all? That's the question. And many are caught in their cave-like excesses, just watching the shadows go back and forth. Sports is a good example of just watching those shadows just chase each other back and forth, chasing a puck across some ice to put it into a net. Watch that for three hours straight and believe that you actually did something, something worthwhile. You know, any kind of sport, any kind of chase, you know, the dog chasing its tail, anything like that. It's all the same. And when one is caught in these excesses, just consumed by them every single day, you remain in camp, you remain in the cave system, you remain shackled, chained, uh, completely imprisoned by its paradigm, its way that it wants you to conceptualize things and that things are always fine in that regard and that's this is all there is to everything. So there are those of us who have been going on our journeys, our quests, asking the questions, leaving camp, leaving the cave, and then coming back, because we know that what we found out is important, and there are those who are stuck in the system even deeper than us. We were stuck just like them, just as deeply, but we decided, hey, there's an opportunity. We can get away from it for a little bit. We can journey further within ourselves, that's the analogy, obviously, and find out. Find out more of the truth. Ask these relevant questions. And so we continue to try. We go back to the cave and tell the others about our findings, what we spent our, our time and energy seeking out. And of course, 
they never want to hear about it for the most part obviously a few might be reached obviously that does happen and that's important that's why we try that's why we've continued to make the efforts because every so often one is able to be reached so the further out we go though the more that we find out and then we bring those revelations back to those in the cave and of course they sound more and more outlandish more and more crazy more and more out there well yeah of course they sound out there because this is where the revelations were discovered out there outside of the cave it's another indicator, another symbol, just alluding to the truth again. Outside of the box. And the more out there it sounds, it's just been this situation where we've been able to, in essence, reach fewer and fewer individuals. Because it almost seems to scare them away even more because yeah the revelations do not become lighter they do not become more positive it, the truth becomes darker that's the point so yeah all these either abusers or just those who just do not want to face the full weight of the truth keep saying all oh, your message has gotten so dark it's the same message I'm just delivering it differently. I am saying exactly the same things that I have always brought forth. Always. This is the same message that I brought forth right from the beginning of the Golden Web. Think about it. You're being used as food energy for an energetic vampire system. But because maybe the tone of my voice was a little different, that message was easier to swallow. It's the same message. It's just as dark. You liked that version of the same message better? Almost nine years ago, it's the exact same thing. I'm not bringing forth a different message. Same exact message. It's just being spoken in the dark as a reflection of how dark the truth of what we face actually is and what it's all about. That's what evil is. It's darkness. That's what death is. Death is darkness. Death is the antithesis of life. Yeah, it is the enemy. Oh, this sounds like more duality. I have to repeat certain things again and again. The filters are so damn strong. The heart is the ending of duality. And this is a war against the mind, which is duality. There it is. And when the war is won, no more duality. Just the beauty of the heart, the goodness of the heart, and the disappearance of the mind and evil, and all of its forces of evil. All of this cleverness. Clown-like cleverness. And most of it isn't even subtle anymore. Because all these vampires have been outed and they have nowhere to hide now. So they're just in full abuser mode. That's all. That's their only play now. They've been shaken out of their rotten tree. The snakes that they are. And now they can't go back into that tree and pretend that they weren't there all along. So yeah. Yeah, they've been outed. You've been outed. And you have nowhere to hide. So you have one play. One play left. Which is to use your whole spell book. And to just act as a gang. Completely, a, a complete gang and just torment and abuse every last real heart that you can see that your master Satan has told you to just target. Go full bore in your abuse. 
hold nothing back. This is it. It's the final stand, the last stand. So give it everything you got. And so that's what they're doing. Because, yeah, the lurkers have been outed. They've been called out, and they had to come out. No more hiding. The Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. There's no more curtain to hide behind. So for those of us who continue to leave camp, continue to leave the cave system, and continue to go out further and come back and try to reach others, it's important to continue to try to do that. It really is. We can't ever give up. The heart never gives up. Ever. If one more heart can be reached, it's worth it. If even one more heart can be reached, pour the totality of your effort into reaching that heart. Of course that's worth it. Think about if you were that heart locked down in the cave still, still being deceived, still drunk on the excesses, and you're just not seeing it. You're still asleep. And you're not seeing the inevitable outcome that's heading your way. You would, you would want every effort to be made to help you in hindsight. Think about just telling the story after the fact that you were asleep and now you're you're out, you're out of the cave, everyone's free, right? And you're telling the story, oh man, I was so asleep, I was so locked down. But the other hearts, you know, who who knew the truth, you know, and they were trying to reach me and I was rejecting them and I just kept rejecting them and they kept trying no matter how much I fought against them. And and I'm so glad that they did. And I, I did, I I argued with them, I was angry and I was just insistent on staying in my position and they were insistent on continuing to try to reach me. And I'm so glad they did. I'm so glad that they never gave up, that they never stopped trying because that's the only thing, the only thing that enabled me to crack my chains, to crack through the barriers of the deception. If they didn't try continuously, relentlessly, it wouldn't have happened. I would have stayed in the cave. I would have been locked down in hell system again. So all I have is my eternal gratitude for those who never gave up on me. And that's exactly why it's important we can never give give up, ever. There might be one more heart out there that can be truly reached. Even one more. It's worth it. You continue to pour your complete effort in the attempt to reach those hearts in every way possible, just as evil and its abusers attempts to tear you down in every way possible. Do you see, that's the dichotomy. Evil tears you down, and we need to do our best to lift up, to lift up other hearts out of the cave, to leave camp, if you will. You can create any analogy you want, but Essentially, it's just being locked down, boxed in, afraid to leave the place that you think is the only place to go. And it's just a prison, afraid, yeah, to leave the prison that one was born in, believing that this is all there is because that's all one has ever known. In essence, that's what all one has ever known come to know that this place is and you begin to believe in the prison and think that there is nothing else so that that's what makes one a cave dweller and then those of us who now realize this is a hell prison system and are trying to reach others and tell them and yeah they're they're fighting against us the other real hearts that just they need to be reached still that's all it is They're, they're still asleep dismissing the alarm we can't relent we have to keep trying and the abusers are going to continue to do what they're going to do that's just all there is to it because that's their full-time job 
And it's not just an eight hour punch in clock job for them. It's every minute of every single day. They're artificial. So they don't have to contend with things like being tired. Think of an Android. I'm not even kidding. That's what they are. They're an artificial system. So they don't need to sleep. They don't have to contend with these things like a biological entity, you know, or stuck in this this monkey biology prison suit has to contend with. You know, our spirit is lifting this cross of biology, this wrong idea, and it's burdensome and it's tiresome. So, of course, the artificial androids, you know, that serve Satan and Lucifer's system... No, they don't have to contend with that. And they're the ones siphoning from the spirit of the heart constantly. So that's their advantage. And that's why it's said that evil never rests. Well, yeah, evil never rests because it doesn't have to. It literally never has to rest. So it doesn't. And it's just absolutely relentless in its pursuit against every heart. And to just destroy every single piece of the heart of the earth. That's its job. That's its job description. And that's all it needs to focus on. The end. That's the beginning and ending of its entire existence. And reason for its existence. That's what evil incarnate actually means. So these things need to be comprehended and realized. Yeah, there's so many artificial androids that look like real people walking all around you, wearing these monkey suits. Again, I reiterate, some of you have called them NPCs. Same thing. It's really the same thing. It doesn't matter what term that we use. We don't have to argue with each other about semantics Uh, that's the semantic of something like that is not the relevant thing to be arguing about whatsoever or disagreeing about it's just the force of evil that's really the the way to see it and they are a gang they're like the hell's angels of the artificial intelligence evil realm Yeah, I even think about that, you know, just different gangs, you know, and and the tells in their name and who they serve, who their master is. It's just, they're just literally laying it out there, telling you to your face. And because it sounds outlandish or out there, people, they think it's meaningless There's no basis of truth behind it. No, they're just telling you straight out. This is who we serve. And it's real. That force of evil is existent. It's not just part of someone's imagination or a tale of mythology. It's legitimate. It is a force of intelligence that is acting as as a reality upon every single one of us it's the one who has set up this whole system so these things need to be completely conceptualized and understood in the correct context because if you don't know who your enemy is then they can just flank you constantly you have to be completely aware of exactly who your enemy is and what they are all about the tactics that they use their subtleties the entirety of who they are that's the fact we can't remain ignorant about these things just because it's dark or it sounds negative Hell is a neg- hell is the most negative place that can be imagined. And we're going to pretend like it's not, like it's a positive place and we just 
can ignore it and it all just goes away, as I said in my last message? No. We can't just ignore it. Ignoring it doesn't go away. Ignore rants. Going on rants all the time of the things that one ignores. Ignore rants. Yeah, that's all that does. You can just draw on all day long about what one is ignoring and thinking that if I just argue and yell loud enough in the opposite direction in my ignorance, then it just makes all that darkness disappear, that full weight of the truth that's coming at me right now. That's a fairy tale way of thinking. And this place, the evil involved, this is no fairy tale. This is no dreamland where you just wake up and stretch your legs and everything is just fine and dandy. And you go, oh, that was an interesting dream. Wow, I'm, I'm glad I'm now in the better place. Wow, that was a great experience. That's evil wants you to think like that. This is not just some little experience. And then you just wake up once you reach death and then go into to heaven. Heaven's gates are just there. They're waiting for you. Just don't worry. Just continue forward in the same way that you're doing. Don't listen to this crazy person who talks about leaving camp. And so on. It's, this is why uh, I'm continuing to do what I'm doing with the time that I have left to use these tools. It's my way of coming back to the cave So I'll keep coming back to the cave, back to camp, and presenting what I am in the attempt to reach even one more heart on this public forum before I no longer have access, obviously, to any of these tools, any of these devices. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe people can hear that there's there's sirens going right now that's maybe a good place to stop the message for today Uh, that's what I wanted to get out for this moment please yeah take care out there you'll hear from me again soon bye for now